Well, hello world. Welcome to Raccoon Point Studios. I'm Sean Bombs. This is the AVM where we talk about audio, video, and music production. Today we're talking about time lapse and how to do it with the Canon R5. All right, so there's two ways you can do time lapses within the Canon R5, and there's one way you can do it externally with an intravolometer. It's really not necessary because it's already built into the camera. So the two different ways are in movie mode and photo mode. So in movie mode, it's very convenient. You take your uh, time lapse and it makes a movie for you. So you get an MP4 file, throw it into DaVinci, Premiere, or Final Cut, add whatever you want to add to it, saturation, color, music, export it, and you're done. With photo mode, you can do it in RAW, C-RAW, or JPEG. I recommend at least doing it with C-RAW so you have that same amount of control. Um, you do have a nice file with that to work with. I would not do it with JPEG because if you're going to do it with JPEG, you might as well just do it in movie mode. So that being said, you're going to get a better bit depth. You're going to have more data to work with. You can really hone in the color of everything. If your white balance is off a little bit because it's raw, you can change that without it really affecting anything else. Also, if the lighting changes during your time lapse, if it gets darker, if it if it's outside and there's cloud coverage and then the sun and you need to change that slider over a little bit to a warmer feel or a, or a bluer feel, um, you can find that area within your time lapse and switch those photos in a way that's not so noticeable. So so everything looks the, exactly the way you want it and that's awesome but it is more time consuming so after you're done you have to export all that now depending on your computer it can and how long your time lapse was it could take anywhere from 20 minutes to two hours to export all those photos and then you have to bring it into premiere davinci or final cut and export that as a movie so when i export it I do one as an MP4 and that way I can put that on YouTube, social media, etc. And then I do another export as ProRes, regular ProRes, maybe high quality depending on what I shot. And that way I have high quality footage for B-roll for any other projects I might be doing. I don't really like putting an MP4 back into the DaVinci and then exporting it again because every time you lose a little bit of quality. So, that being said, I'll show you where this stuff is in the R5 if you don't already know, if you're new to the Canon R5, or if you have another Canon camera or any camera, maybe this will help you out finding it. So, let's jump over to movie mode and into the menu system. All right, so you're in movie mode, you go to menu, you are on the red menu, which is the uh, camera icon and you go over to five find time lapse movie and enable it by hitting your set boom and now you have your intervals your number of shots and you can have you can pick what kind of movie you want do you want it in 4k 8k full hd i just go with 4k and you can have it do auto, auto exposure. I just have it fixed first frame, which means it's not gonna do anything during my shooting. And that's it. Oh, and I have auto screen off. Oh, screen auto off, enable, sorry. So that means it'll stay off, so it's not gonna take all the battery. And then it also, lets you know how long it's going to take down here depending on the number of shots that you do um so that's that okay that's movie mode all right so now we're in photo mode in photo mode you go over to number six in that uh camera menu and you can see it says interval timer so you have to enable that and again, you have your timer. So you go here and you would come down and then you can change. So I have it set to two seconds for the last time I did one um, with this mode. And then down here you have zero to 90, I think, or 99. 
but when you're in zero zero you have unlimited so you just i just use unlimited because um 99 photos ain't gonna give you nothing so i use limit unlimited and i make sure that i have a timer set on my phone so i know to check my camera if i'm not near it or if i'm doing other things so that's how you do that all right, so that's two ways that you can get to the time-lapse feature of the Canon R5. Um, earlier today, I went outside and I did one time-lapse in movie mode, where I have footage of me having it all set up how I have it. I'm going to show you that footage, and then I'm going to show you um, examples of the movie mode footage and examples of the photo mode footage that I did a few days ago. Um, so you can see for yourself the difference and if it's worth it to you to shoot in photo mode and take all that time necessary or if you just want to use movie mode and get stuff out there because you just like to see time lapses all right ladies and gentlemen i'm out here on the minokin river and it's a beautiful beautiful day for august um usually it's a hundred <laughs> and humid but uh the humidity is low it seems about 80 something nice little breeze and lots of clouds so it's a perfect perfect day for a time lapse all right everybody just show you what i have going on i have the uh, canon r5 with the sigma 35 mil 1.4 i have it at f 2.8 i have a two second exposure time and i have my interval set to three and i have it set so it will give me a one minute time lapse. Um, as you can see, it is a very beautiful cloudy day. Because I have it set for a two second exposure, I need a lot of ND because out here on the water, it gets extra bright. Two to five is not gonna cut it. Uh, six to nine is not gonna cut it. Especially if you're doing an F2.8. Why do I have a long exposure? Well, because the clouds look a lot better when it's a long exposure. They are, they uh, look like smoke when they move fast. They have a more uh, beautiful flow to them. If you have your shutter speed fast, you won't need the NDs, but you'll just have more of that jittery look. And for clouds, it's not, not as pleasing so for this i have two polar pros one's a six it's a nd 64 pl and the other one is the a variable six to nine peter mckinnon edition with the hard stops and i just stack them it, it, it works great and you know that's an expensive way to do this but i already had these filters for other things just wanted to show you that and we're going to go back inside and talk about the two different ways I've shot this. So what'd you guys think? Let me know down below. I thought the movie mode held up very well for 8-bit codec. Um, I was able to mess around with the temperature and the tint and the saturation, shadows, highlights to get a little bit more mood out of it and it didn't fall apart. That being said, if it had been a more high contrast scenario with the sun involved, more highlights, more shadows, um, 
I would definitely have to use photo mode. Um, so my thoughts are if you're going to be in a scenario where the scene doesn't have too much contrast, um, you can get away with movie mode. But if there's a lot of light, a lot of shadow, then I would definitely, definitely use the photo mode in RAW so you can have the functionality, um, the ability to lift those shadows and lower those highlights wherever you need to without the image falling apart and having the ability to change your white balance just in case things change in the middle of the scenes where it would be beneficial. If you're into this kind of content, please subscribe. I will be putting out more content on photography, video stuff, guitar pedals, pro audio, all the things, because that's what we're doing here at Raccoon Point Studios. I'll see you next time. Peace out. You can leave. You can leave. <laughs>